All right, this is the fourth and final video of the STE mimics part of the 12 lead electrocardiography course. I'm Professor Adam Thompson, and let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about acute pericarditis. Acute pericarditis is inflammation of the pericardial sac, which is the sac around the heart. Uh, and as that becomes inflamed, it can cause uh, ECG changes. In the first stage, it can cause an ST elevation, concave ST elevation. Uh, it will even cause some PR segment depression. And in the final stage, you might have some T-wave inversion. Here's an example of what this STE mimic looks like. All right, so you have concave ST elevation, and it's global, global ST elevation. You have ST elevation in all of these leads everywhere almost on the CKG. Uh, sometimes you'll have a little bit of ST depression AVR, and that can even continue in AVL as well. But for the most part, you have ST elevation on this 12 lead. So it, go, it goes across uh, reciprocal uh, leads even, where you wouldn't normally see two leads with the same uh, you know, view of an infarct. So this is a mimic. In, in this one, you even have a little bit of that J-point notching, notch J-points, uh, like you see with early repolarization, and it is uh, going to look a lot like early repolarization. You may have PR segment depression with your more viral pericarditis, and you may, uh, one big indicator is this thing called spotic sign, which I talked about a little bit before, where you kind of get this downward trending of the isoelectric line, and it even it starts the J point downward all the way into the PR segment. And you notice it keeps going down. It creates that, like those little stair steps. Okay, That's called spotix sign, and it's indicative of acute pericarditis. So here are some of the findings you might see with acute pericarditis. Uh, I talked about most of them. Global ST elevation. And again, AVR uh, and V1, and sometimes even AVL, could have a little bit of depression. The PR depression is only present with viral pericarditis. And spotic sign, that downward trending of the uh, isoelectric line. And then pain, this is going to be a big one. Pain may be positional. So great thing about EKGs is every one of them comes with a patient. So look at your patient, um, have them lean forward and see if they get relief in that pain. And you might even see uh, cessation of those 12 lead changes as they get pain relief. So do a 12 lead every time they have a change in the quality or severity of their pain. Here's another uh, 12 lead EKG. This is actually the uh, another 12 lead that we used in the discussion on earlier polarization. But it has much of the same changes as an acute pericarditis. If you see uh, that global ST elevation that you do see here, uh, ST elevation in almost every single lead, uh, you might even see some PR segment depression, indicating that this is more viral pericarditis. Get rid of some of this. Uh, and it's going to be concaved, uh, upright. A lot of times you'll see it looks a lot like early repole with a T wave closer to the QRS complex. The ST elevation will go across reciprocal leads, two leads that are reciprocal to each other. Um, it doesn't care about that. You know, it's, again, it's inflammation around the entire heart. And, and so with this EKG, uh, assess your patient, of course, and see if their pain is positional uh, and if they have, uh, you know, other factors that clue you in to acute pericarditis. Here we have another good example, um, and you do see, again, that spotix sign, the downward trending of the baseline, of the isoelectric line, from the J-point all the way down into the PR segment. You have your concave ST elevation, albeit not that impressive on this 12 EDKG, uh, but you might even note a little bit of PR segment depression there. You certainly see it here in lead 2, uh, indicating a more viral pericarditis. Um, in that ST elevation... Uh, albeit not that significant, it's more indicative of an acute pericarditis. Here's one with a little bit more significant of ST elevation. And I, I think on this one, that spotic sign is even more pronounced and more obvious. 
You can see it almost in every one of these leads that has ST elevation. Uh, and again, it's concave, upright ST elevation, just like or benign early repoll. It's going to look very similar to that. And it's going to, uh, again, it goes across leads that are reciprocal to each other. The patient is the big indicator, okay? So is this patient's pain positional? Are they febrile? Because remember, it's an inflammation, it's an infection. It could, in fact, be causing them to be septic. So, uh, you know, do a good assessment of your patient and, and identify this acute pericarditis. So your take-home points when it comes to acute pericarditis, consider the patient's presentation. Again, great thing about EKGs, every one of them comes with a patient. Uh, look for global ST elevation, PR depression, and spotic sign. When do you want to suspect a myocardial infarction? Whenever there's convex ST elevation, whenever there's reciprocal changes, um, and in the back of your mind, you, should, you need to have that possibility for anybody uh, and get your trends. Do your 12 leads with every set of vital signs and watch for changes. That dynamic 12 lead is going to make you lean more towards an acute MI than an STE mimic. Next, I want to talk briefly about hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia comes into every EKG discussion because it, it likes to mimic things. It's kind of the great imitator, uh, so to speak, and it'll mimic uh, different dysrhythmias, uh, but it will certainly, in, in some regards, mimic an acute myocardial infarction. Some changes associated with hyperkalemia are a sine wave pattern. If you've ever taken trigonometry and you've used a graphing calculator, if you hit sign, enter on the graph, you get something like this. Well, severe hyperkalemia can end up looking like that, almost like a super wide VTAC. Um, so what ends up happening is as your potassium increases, you, you start with this peak T wave, okay, narrow, sharp at the top, peak T wave, and then eventually uh, your QRS will widen and, and go right into that T wave and the uh, nadir of the S wave, the tip of the S wave, and the top of the T wave will have a straight line that kind of connects them. The P wave will disappear, and you'll end up with this sine wave-like pattern. That's pretty severe hyperkalemia, and it is lethal if untreated. Here's a 12 DKG from a patient with diagnosed hyperkalemia. In this patient, uh, you can obviously see the T waves are pretty tall on this 12 lead. These are not hyperacute, as in early anterior wall, you know, hyperacute T waves. No, these are uh, hyperkalemic T waves. They're tall, they're narrow, tall, and sharp on top, okay? And these are more hyperkalemic, not hyperacute. Hyperacute T waves are also tall, symmetrical T waves, but they typically have a broader base, and they'll end up dragging that ST segment up eventually. So some of the things that you see here that actually mimic an MI um, might be the fact that they have these tall T waves, right? Uh, you get tall T waves with an MI, so uh, you might think that it's an MI due to that. Uh, you might get inversion of the T waves. You might start to get pattern that looks like ST elevation in some leads. Uh, but before, uh, you know, thinking that this is a STEMI, this patient's potassium uh, needs to be treated, so they'd have to get a serum potassium level and get this patient uh, treated pretty pretty quickly. They may get some calcium. They'll most likely get uh, dialysis. So again, the findings associated with hyperkalemia are peaked T waves, potentially a sine wave pattern of, with your more critical hyperkalemia. That, that's a very peri-arrest patient. They're close to dying. Uh, you, you'll have pre, Brady or tachy dysrhythmias are, are both common. Implanted pacemaker, uh, that's not capturing should make you think hyperkalemia. Uh, I've actually experienced those patients where they have an implanted pacemaker and it's not a dislodged, uh, you know, probe or anything like that. They just had a wi wide bradycardic pattern associated with a hyperkalemia. Here's a 12 lead from a patient with pretty severe hyperkalemia. Uh, this patient has a very wide QRS complex. Now, this QRS complex should not make you think it's ventricular. When it's that wide, like wider than 200 milliseconds, you need to think one of two things, hyperkalemia or electrolyte derangement or a TCA overdose. Tricyclic antidepressants can cause EKG patterns very similar to this as well. In a good history 
will help you uh, identify which one you're dealing with. But look, you have this sine wave. If you draw a straight line from the nadir of the S wave all the way to the top peak of the T wave, you have a straight line. This is a severe hyperkalemic patient. So this is not ST depression over here. This is not ST elevation over here. This is just hyperkalemia. Here's one of those patients I was telling you about uh, where they have an implanted pacemaker. You could see the pacer spikes firing along uh, and the pacer is failing to capture. There's no electrical capture here. Uh, even though you see this spike with this QRS, it's right in the middle of the QRS complex. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, that's, that's just the sine wave-like pattern from the hyperkalemia underneath uh, those spikes and they're not they're disassociated much like a complete heart block the pacemaker and the ventricles are not communicating with each other due to this severe hyperkalemia this patient will die if left untreated next we're going to talk about Osborne waves or J waves these occur in the presence of hypothermia we don't use them to diagnose hypothermia you're certainly going to want to use a thermometer to do that. However, if you have a hypothermic patient, I, it's good to know that you may see these, and they could make you think that the ST, eleva uh, the ST segment is elevated when, in fact, it's not. So sort of in conclusion, when you're talking about ST mimics, you want to take a look at the entire clinical picture. Uh, often a pathology has not read up on what it is supposed to look like on an EKG, uh, and it breaks all of the rules, right? Um, so, uh, again, I, I've said it before, the great thing about EKGs is every one of them comes with a patient. So do a good assessment of your patient. Uh, don't just get 112 lead EKG and make a determination. Get a trend, you know, get a two or three or even four 12 lead EKGs uh, while that patient's with you and do it with every set of vital signs and treat it like a vital sign. So that's the end of the discussion on STE mimics. You may go back to the last video, video three on this discussion, or move on to the next video where we're going to talk about ischemia, injury, and infarct.